January 3rd. The sun's not coming up. The sun's not coming up. I can't deal with this. School's starting Monday. How am I supposed to get to class when it's so dark you can't see your hand three inches in front of your face? When I got up, I figured it was just because it was winter. You know, sun goes down and stays down longer when it's cold. But I knew something was up by noon. The sun should have been up by now. It's starting to freak me out. Neighbors have come by asking for some things they don't want to run to the store for, ignoring the elephant in the room that there is no frickin' sun. Apparently the darkness gets even worse when you try to get out of the neighborhood. It's best to just stay here until this all blows over, while pretending it's not happening at all. Dad was sleeping on the couch this morning. I think he and Mom got into another fight. They're not talking, and Mom's been crying, even though she does her best to hide it. God, it's bad enough that the world might be ending. I don't have time to worry about my parents' failing marriage. January 4th. The street lights went out, haven't come back on. Outside now looks like Satan's Winter Wonderland. With all the snow and it being so dark, I can see other houses across the street, the lights shining through the window like beacons in the night. The only reason I can make out anything in my yard is from the light shining from my living room window. Mom and Dad aren't talking. Jesus Christ, you could cut the tension with a knife. I really wish I could go outside to smoke, but... I swear Dad had a stroke when he saw me open the back door. I don't know how he expects me to go to school if I can't even go out on the back porch to get some air. But whatever. For now, I'm just cracking the window in my bedroom and doing what I can to waft the smoke out there. I'm 16. I can make my own decisions. January 7th. Okay... I guess I'm not going to school. Sun's still not up. Weekend's just been boring as hell, with just watching outdoors getting darker, if that's even possible. I even started getting ready before I realized, what the hell am I doing, and went downstairs to ask if I can stay home. My dad gave me his approval, and said I can stay home for as long as it stays dark. First time we really acknowledged how absolutely bizarre that is, and it's the only acknowledgement. I tried turning on the TV, see if there's anything on the news about this, but all I got was static. Couldn't even connect to any local channels. It's all snow. Phone's dead too. I tried calling Eileen Lydia and got nothing. Not even a busy signal. It worked last night when I talked with Lydia. She lives just a few blocks away, and it's dark there, too. Isla lives in the city, though, not Bardenville, and apparently the sun's fine there. She said she'd come over today to see if I'm still making things up. I'm not making this up. The sun's gone, and it's showing no sign of coming back. January 8th. It's not just the sun disappearing. Lights are going out. It started with the kitchen. I went down and tried flicking the light. Got nothing. I yelled for Dad and said the kitchen ball burned out, and he went pale. He switched it, and I heard him swear for the first time in my life when it still didn't work. I tried to tell him to check the breaker, but he was clearly losing it. By the time Mom came in, he was babbling nonsense about the lights being taken away, and Mom had to help him lie down. I wonder if this has anything to do with why he was at work late for the last few weeks. I don't know what he works on, but I'm starting to go a little stir-crazy, and it's making me paranoid. Isla never showed up yesterday. I stayed up until midnight, and she never showed. Maybe she got turned around. Maybe she forgot. She's like that. I bet she forgot. January 9th. Half the house is stuck in the dark now, including my bedroom. But that's not the worst of it. Watching the street is the only form of entertainment I have, other than reading. 
and I'm getting too antsy for that. I cracked the window while I street watched, and then I heard it. For the last few days, all I've heard while I've cracked the windows is wind. Today, I heard whispers. Yes, I thought maybe I finally cracked and was hearing things, but I pressed my head against the screen to listen better. It was then I heard the clack of something like claws climbing up the side of the house. I yanked my head back just in time to see those claws land down the sill. I was frozen when that, that thing hauled itself up to my eye level. It was probably my height, maybe a bit bigger, pure black with tufts of hair or fur coming from the top of its head and its shoulders. It didn't have any facial features other than these large pointed ears and bright red eyes, bigger than my balled up fist. It blinked a few times. Like he was just as surprised to see me as well. His claws sliced through the screen as I stared at it. I had to be going crazy, right? Its enormous hand groped around my desk before landing on my last pack of cigarettes. It yanked them back, waved them in my face, and then it dropped out of sight with a chittering madman sound. I screamed as loud as I could before slamming the window down. My dad came in, and when I told him what I saw, he began to cry, just crumpled into a ball on the floor and began sobbing. I had to tuck him into bed. I asked mom what was wrong with him, but she couldn't answer me. All she knew was that he came back January 2nd, looking paranoid as all hell and smelling like someone else's perfume. I don't know what's worse, the fact that my dad apparently is having an affair, or how calmly my mom said that. Apparently, she'd been on to him for months, and he'd been likely going on for years. Years. It was only that night she caught him. January 10th. The darkness took a house last night. The chittering from those freaks was so loud it woke me up. We crowded in front of the living room window and watched as dozens, maybe even a hundred of those monsters surrounded the house across the street. Windows were busted in, the door was ripped off the hinges, and they flooded inside. The kinnies started screaming seconds after they got in. They screamed for what felt like ages, and all we could do was stand there and watch. Dad bolted around the house after that, extinguishing every candle, turning off any lights we still had that worked. He was sure they were attracted to the light. I don't get it, but I'm honestly not going to argue with the guy who's clearly two steps away from a mental breakdown. The Kinneys did have the most lights on still. My thighs are going to be covered in bruises with how I keep bumping into everything every few steps. I can only use my flashlight to write in my diary. I have to leave it dark the rest of the time. All I can do is just watch the darkness outside the window. January 11th. Two more houses were ripped to pieces during the night. Maybe the night. I can't tell anymore. I count days by sleeps now, and now there's not much else to do but sleep. I'm getting better at seeing in the dark though, although all there is to see isn't great. The monsters just took the Kenny's house down. There's nothing left but a pile of wood. The Lots and Jarvis house is also destroyed. In the wreckage I can sometimes see dark shapes moving around them. More monsters, probably. I wish I could just see Lydia's house, but it's too far away. I hope she's okay. It's clear my dad prepped for being here for a long time, though. We have enough canned food to last until the end of the century. 
Something on that last normal night spooked him, and although he and my mom are clearly going to split the moment they can, he still cares about us, even if he did betray us. I'm too tired to be angry. I'm too scared. Maybe turning the lights off was the right choice, but who knows. January 12th. Reese Gill. That's the name of Dad's other woman. Or in this case, man. Boy, this just couldn't be easy, could it? I was in the living room watching the snow when I saw a dark shape dart across the lawn. I almost screamed for my dad when I heard someone run into the door. But then I heard a voice. God, please let me in! I don't know what made me turn the knob, but the guy nearly flattened me in his panic to get inside. The side of his face is all raked up from something's claws, and right after I closed the door, I heard something else slam against it, followed by an angered scream. That thing was right on his heels, and I didn't even see it. My dad admitted it all to my mom in the other room when Reese practically fell in my dad's arms, sobbing about how they weren't just seeing things. Mom came out after a few minutes, alone, dry-eyed, and holding a first aid kit. She patched up Reese's face while Reese explained what had been happening all over the block. The monsters, or shadows as he called them, are in fact attracted to the light. Dad was right. But they also like heat. Ree saw a few of them curled up around a burning house like a bunch of dogs in front of a fireplace. They didn't bring the dark, though. The other thing did. Dad and Reese refused to explain further, but apparently that night they saw something. Something unknown. I'm praying for the sun's return soon. Dad turned the heat off, and we're all bundling up. January 13th. I like Reese. That sounds so bad, I know. He's the guy that's ruining everything for my parents. But he's super nice. He's helping board up the windows so as little light and heat escapes, but leaves peepholes for me to keep an eye out. He's trying to keep the mood up by bringing up his travel stories. Turns out he went all over Europe for summer vacation after he graduated. If I'm ever interested, he can recommend the best spots, apparently. I'll take going anywhere to get out of this damn darkness. I think even Mom likes Reese, or at least is playing nice. There's no room to be a dick while the world's potentially ending. And Dad... He looks happy when he's with Reese, happier than he ever looked with Mom. Damn, if I keep crying all over my diary, I'm gonna make the ink bleed. I can practically see in the dark like a cat now, although Reese gave me plenty of new batteries for my flashlight, so my handwriting is actually readable. January 14th. The monster that stole my cigarettes came back. I know it was him because he's made the butts into a creepy necklace. Dickhole, I could use a smoke. He was just peering in through the slats of my window's barricade, tapping on the glass with his claws, and making more weird warbling sounds. Reese showed me his gun. He says if the monster tries busting through, he'll make sure to put it down. I've never felt so relieved. In the meantime, I'm calling it Nick, short for nicotine, and I'm sleeping in my parents' room. Well, mom's room. Dad and Reese are now occupying a room in the basement. I wish they'd just tell us what they saw that night. January 15th. Nick got in. Nick got in. Damn. I don't even know how. I just heard Reese and Dad scream and came down to the basement to find Dad bleeding everywhere and Reese trying to put a bullet in Nick's head. He missed twice and ended up pegging him in the arm once. It bolted back long enough for Reese and I to drag Dad to the main floor and to shut the door. Nick is stuck in the basement and he can't get up here. 
but I do hear him pacing up and down the stairs. Dad's really messed up. Mom started praying when she was patching up his neck. He looks super pale still, and he's going in and out of consciousness. Reese is holding on to his hand, and he's bawling his eyes out. I think my dad's dying. January 16th. Dad's dead. He passed some time. Well, I don't really know when. Clocks have all stopped and haven't been going for days. It's like time's not even real anymore. It's just an eternal night before we all die. I peered out the window to see the front yard's got a few more bodies in it, all pretty badly shredded, but I would recognize Lydia's hot pink coat anywhere. I think the rest of the bodies are her family, but I can't tell. Won't be able to either, probably, even if I could get up close to them. We're all going to die. Mom's just laying in bed and Reese is counting his bullets in between his sniffles. All I need to know is that he has more than three. January 17th. After we stashed Dad's body in the office, Reese sat both Mom and I down and told us what happened. They had met by the old state hospital, planning on going for a drive in Dad's car while leaving Reese's stashed around there. Dad never once worked late in his life, and for some reason, that of all things ticks me off. He always got on my case whenever I skipped a class or two, and all this time, he was practically gunning it from work to go meet his boyfriend. At sunset, they saw the monsters. Two of them, not counting the shadows that surrounded the one that almost looked human, except he was too tall and too pale and had eyes black as the night. The other one was hunched over and some sort of drooling creature with a maw, not big enough for all its teeth. But it was clear these two creatures were not friends. The king, that's what Reese is calling the one with the shadows, apparently attacked first, but the beast fought back. It was then the sky began to grow dark, despite the sun still sitting on the horizon. They watched the sky grow black while the creatures continued to fight. They got the hell out of there before it became too dark, both going home and telling each other they'd been drugged. That was the only explanation for what unexplainable crap they'd seen. But they both still found themselves preparing, Dot picking up all that canned food, and Reese digging that gun out of storage and making sure he had ammo. This has nothing to do with us. The King and the Beast just put us in the middle of their ship fest, and we're all going to die because of it. January 18th. Mom's going to kill herself. Reese and I aren't going to stop her. There's not going to be an end to this night. Mom knows this. The sun's never coming back. Nick is still in the basement, pacing up and down those steps. It's waiting for its friends to show up, so they can kill us all, rip us limb from limb. Reese is going to make a last stand when that happens, but Mom can't bring herself to wait for the sun anymore. She sat me down and told me how much I mean to her, that she still loves Dad, even if he really, really hurt her. That she won't think badly of me if I'm not ready to end it. I'm not, but I'm just glad she's going to take pills and peacefully go to sleep instead of taking Reese's offer to use his gun. I'm not sure if I could take it if I heard the gun go off. I'm such a coward. I should be joining her right now, but I'm too scared to die. I'm only 16. I don't want to die. January 19th. This will be my last entry. Nick and the others broke through last night, right through the basement door. Reese took out a lot of them, but I'm not sure if he's still alive, 
Since I'm not hearing any gunshots anymore, I'm barred up in my room. I keep getting whiffs of my parents' rotting bodies, and it makes me want to puke. Why? Why? Why didn't I go with Mom yesterday? I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I can hear them in the hall. They're looking for me. They can feel my warmth, even if my fingers feel numb and my teeth can't stop chattering. I can hear them whispering my name. I'm going to make a break for it out my window. I have no doubt that I'll freeze to death, but I'll take that over being ripped to pieces. I hear it's quite nice, freezing to death. You just sort of go to sleep. Goodbye. I found this in the attic of a home I'm restoring. There was a horrible blizzard a few decades back that destroyed a ton of homes, but nothing like this. Maybe it's a joke. Maybe it's some creative writing homework or the beginning of a novel. All I can say is that last night the sun went down, but it hasn't come back up yet this morning. <laughs>